everybody. This is Adam Gusso uh, coming to you today. <clears throat> Rainy day it is. So if you hear a little pitter-patter of little drops, there's a question that somebody asked me. Uh, and I, you know, I make a point of sort of writing down questions. If, if you've got something you, that you're curious about, it's possible that I've done a video on it, but it's possible I haven't. And this is something I haven't in the 15 years I've been doing this on YouTube. And it's, how do you get that growling sound? on the low notes or the bent notes. How do you get the growl in the low notes? I think the person meant bent notes. Maybe that, maybe that's the answer right there. But the growl on the harp. Well, I, number one thing, first thing might be that you might want to start with a low harp. So I'm using an A harp, an A harp. Um, and how to get that growl? Well, number one is you're not going to get it if you don't pull a lot of air through the harp. So number one is you got to have a pretty tight embouchure. If your embouchure is multiple notes, you're not going to get it. So you need a tight seal. Get those fat lips. Get the inner part of the pucker. All the stuff you've heard me say a thousand times. And by the way, I do have a website, Modern Blues Harmonica, if you're interested in stuff beyond what I do on YouTube. There's stuff there for sale. I've not raised my prices in 15 years. Same same price structure. So, I'm going to show you actually a cool thing that Matt Riddle showed me how to do, which might be part of the growl. But really what I think people are hearing when they say growl, I think they're talking about a sound like this, which is on the two hold could be the two draw, could be the three draw, it's probably not on the four draw, could be the one draw, the low draw notes on the lower harps, and A is a good harp. So, two draw. That's just a hard bend, there's no magic. If you can't bend that hard, you're probably getting something like this. So, So that's just not a very effective bend. If you get a harder bend and you learn how to move your mouth to the in the way that we do when we're bending notes, and then you pull more air through. Listen, listen, I'm gonna first I'm gonna shape my, my lips and mouth so that I'm able to get the bent note at a pretty low volume. Then I'm gonna increase the amount of air that I pull through, and I think you'll hear that it changes the timbre of the note. It, it roughens it up a little bit. There are more harmonics coming through. So here's the bass note. Let me get it, let me bend it. So that's a quiet whole step bend. Now I'm gonna pull more air through. Right, so it really has something to do with volume. Now the other thing that happens is when you do that, if you keep your mouth shape consistent if, if, if you get your mouth shaped so that you can get a whole step bend at a low volume, it takes a lot, your mouth's really twisted. Now, if you pull more air through, you know what happens? The pitch dies. The pitch dies. So you then have to sort of release some of that bending energy from your mouth, even as you're pulling harder. Because that, that's what happened. It, it dove. Now, you can you can try to adjust sort of the precise place where your tongue is relative to the roof of your mouth. And I think a lot of what people hear is actually bad harp playing. It's somebody who's not sort of making, not creating the bent notes in the most efficient way. Um, and when you do that, you, you may have some vibration. The air may be sort of... Um, creating almost like 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 bubbles between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. How about that? See, I'm trying to play like a bad play a bad not a not too good player, but somebody who can bend but like nasty. And I'm putting my chin all the way forward. Ah, now I stumbled across something that may help explain the mystery. If I do a bend and I've got the right well, let's say I'm not even that good in terms of placing the pitch. It's not exactly a half step, but it's somewhere around. Then if I tongue the note and do sort of repeated notes, check this out. This is different, right? So instead of just... If I go... I think that's what people mean when they talk about the nasty sound. The What was the sound? That growl. 
Gusso, it takes you a while, but eventually you get there. Now, okay, so that reminds me then of another song that I've never really gone near, which is Jack Bruce in Train Time, which is one of the more remarkable harmonica solos in the repertoire. It's almost never covered. I don't think I've heard a cover of it. And it's really hard to do because he's really effing abusing the harp. It's, it's, it's what we call making it quack. It's incredibly percussive. A lot of air coming through. It's like all percuss. And I'll probably blow out the damn harp if I try to do it. I can't even remember how to do it. I used to know how to do the damn song, and I'm just... I'll have to, re I'll have to review. That would be real far project forward with your tongue. Jack Bruce is a, it's a madman. Okay, I think I've answered the question, which is low harp, two draw. What happens if we do the same thing on the three draw? Well, this is where we run into huge problems because people who want to get that growl on the three draw tend to not bend it in the precise way that blues wants it to be bent. They go. Again, we're, we're pulling a lot of air through, we're bending, and we're doing repeated sort of tonguing of the notes. The tongue is hitting the roof of your mouth as you hit that bend. You never heard me play like that, right? That's sort of subpar. This is a good, well broken in harp. One draw. Doesn't really work the same way. So, well, is that what you mean by the <clears throat> low growl? How do you growl the low note? Well, that's called making it quack. So what I'm doing is just going ta-ta-ta-ta-ta as I draw in. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. As opposed to that real deep, smooth, mellow sound. Now the growl is, it's clacking, the, the reeds are clacking against the, we should call this video something like just bizarre sounds on harp. So that's it, that's the lesson. How to, how to get that growl on the low note. Oh, the, the Nat Riddles thing. Okay, one more, one more thing. I don't play this way, but Nat showed me how to play this way, my teacher, Nat Riddles. And it, what it was is it was kind of a thwup sound. So you take your tongue and you start with your tongue on the harp. So you actually, but it's a lip purse thing. So it's not about tongue blocking, but you actually, you put your tongue on the, on the, over the two draw hole and then you pull it away. And what you want, what you're shooting for is a little uh, temporary, um, like a little bend that, that resolves, bend, a sort of bend and release. And it's terrific for that Muddy Waters kind of thing. Why don't you try that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of lightly touching the hole. And if I do it super slow, Really, you're getting a whole step bend, but it's kind of a ghost bend that's resolving really quickly. And that, I, th I would say that adds some dirt. Again, these are things you can't do when the three blow. Why do I prefer the two draw to the three blow? That's why, because you can't begin to do that stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm done, this lesson's over. Rainy day in uh, rainy day in Mississippi. Uh, back with you soon. Bye bye.